Thank you so much. I think that was really, uh, really, really helpful. And I can relate to so many of the points brought up through the different people you've talked to there as a parent myself. So I don't see any questions in the chat, but I mean, people are more than welcome to continue to add questions there. I've got a few myself to kind of get things started, uh, as well as for, for Ashley, if anybody has any uh, questions as well, we can kind of bring her back up. But in terms of you talked about pacing, uh, and I just wondered if you could maybe explain a little bit more. I mean, I have gotten so used to pacing. I mean, I've lived with rheumatoid arthritis for like over 30 years. So it's like almost who I am is involves pacing. But I don't know, maybe you just explain it to everybody else in terms of what that might look like um, and, and it might influence like a, a certain day, you know, as a mom or, or a parent with arthritis. Sure. So um, pacing involves, um, involves planning your day. So that it involves listening to your body, <laughs> listening to yourself, and um, making choices or decisions about where you're going to spend your energy. So pacing is is predominantly an energy management strategy. So it means um, people often talk about the four P's or the five P's, and there's probably seven, eight, or nine P's, depending on uh, what perspective um, you bring to it. But in, the P's include priorities. You need to know what's most important to do planning, so you need to know what you're going to do when, um, positioning, because you need to take care of your body. So often you'll have more energy at um, work if you're using, um, if you've set up your workstation to uh, accommodate your body size, so ergonomic type strategies, for example, um, or um, if you're going to be lifting and carrying children or teaching children how to crawl up onto your lap instead of picking them up and putting them on your lap. Um, so it's, um, it's a variety of strategies so that you recognize that you do what's most important at the time of day or the day of the week where you're going to have the most energy to do what's most important, that you plan some breaks or um, rests or um, uh, physical activity or a mental break um, so that you can have a little bit of recovery time. So that helps you pace and be able to um, manage all of the things that might be part of your day or your week. Um, so um, it's part that that's why I often mention it in conjunction with balance is that you kind of, you have, there's always a trade-off. Um, you can't predict exactly what the day is going to be like in advance. Um, but you know the things that you most need to get done. And um, pacing is kind of a strategy to think about, okay, how am I, how am I going to expend my energy? How am I going to choosing where to spend my energy? What's most important for it? How can I recoup um, some of that energy? Um, often this is a place where people also talk about spoon theory. <laughs> um, and I don't know if um, it's worth mentioning a little bit about that, but th there's a cute, cute little story um, that's now decades old because I first heard about it. Um, I've been an OT for more than 40 years and I think I heard about it in my first five years of practice. Um, but um, you envision the, um, this handful or drawer full or bucket full of spoons <laughs> and you, all, uh, you have a finite number of them. Um, and each time you do an activity, you pull out the number of spoons to represent the energy um that 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 takes and when you run out of spoons you're done for the day is the very short um version of it uh, but that is you do need to think you have a finite amount of energy so you do need to think about how you're going to balance it and you get to decide what's the right activities and the right amount of them and the right variation or assortment of activities that will work for you yeah no, I think that spoon theory is is still really relevant. I didn't realize how old it was, but yeah, we have perhaps a, a lesser, you know, uh, number of spoons because we live with inflammatory arthritis, for example. And, you know, I, I, I think it's telling. And uh, I know something I learned with my, especially when my kids were babies, right? I would kind of try to 
if I needed to take them out and manage the car seat and put them in the stroller, it's like I try to minimize how many times I might have to do that in a day or spread it out so that I didn't have to do it like five times that maybe it was just once or twice, right? To kind of get to one yeah. place and then return home just to, yeah, um, yeah just the lessons I guess yeah. I've learned. And, uh, and people, mom, in, in our studies, mom shared lots of different strategies that worked in their context. So like one mom said, um, get to know the middle school aged girls in your neighborhood because <laughs> they like to be a mini mom. So that so and when you mentioned about lifting kids in and out of the car, so that it you know your next door neighbor, eleven year old girl might like to lift the baby in and out of um, the car seat and so forth. So that there's you can find little bits of help in in the funniest little places. That same mum used to talk about um, she did daylight saving time whenever she needed an extra sleep. So she just turned all the clocks back an hour. She said it only works until the kids are a certain age. But if you turn back the clocks an hour, and she said, then we can all get an extra hour's rest. So people would, would squeeze in or sneak in um, little strategies that just save little pockets of energy here and there. Yeah, right. And I mean, kind of wrapping things around just some of those additional supports, right? We talked about doulas and perhaps how to access them, but occupational therapists too, or do you know, maybe just a brief explanation, can they help? Um, where can you maybe find them and uh, you know particularly as it relates to parenting and then maybe Ashley right. you may want to comment on that too in terms of the uh, yeah. generally speaking. Yeah so most occupational therapists should be able to help you with strategies related to parenting or managing energy and so forth although there, you will be able to find some OTs who um have worked with a lot of people with arthritis or have worked with um, parents a lot of the time. So they might have um, additional, more depth of expertise. You can find OTs in the um, outpatient departments of hospitals. You can find them in private practice. You, in Canada, you can go to the um, Canadian Association of Occupational Therapists website, caot.ca, and um, go to the link that says find an occupational therapist. So you can find them geographically. You can also find them by expertise. So you can um, type in arthritis or musculoskeletal to, um, diseases, for example. So you can find occupational therapists near you. Um, your physician or rheumatologist can also refer you to an occupational therapist. So um, if, if you can see an occupational therapist as an outpatient in a publicly funded system, then you uh, might find that there's a waiting list or a limited number of visits that you can have, but they wouldn't be out of pocket. Um, and if you find them in the private sector, then there would be a fee, but often extended medical, extended health plans, if you have them, have a few dollars available for um, paramedical support. And uh, occupational therapists are often included in that group. Right. Yeah, and maybe I'll close off with you, Ashley. I know you shared a bit in terms of accessing doulas for Indigenous peoples through their community, but I don't know if you would have some perhaps general advice around accessing that kind of support. Because I can maybe see some value sort of as you're getting used to coming home and being a parent um, and adapting these tasks. I don't know. Don't yeah, know. I, I think my best advice would be to like connect with your social worker or um, a nurse practitioner that's on the floor if if you've just given birth to see if that's available if you're accessing other parenting programs they probably know about doulas one of the things the doulas um, generally do is a lot of outreach work and so trying to get kind of their information into the hands of other into the hands of OTs so that OTs can refer to doulas and doulas can refer to OTs and so they're trying to be a little bit more collaborative um, in the ways that they approach things and just like OTs, they're, um, you know, the same way they're talking to OTs, they're talking to people at a food bank or they're talking to people at, you know, different kind of areas so that no matter what that point is, if somebody says, this is the type of support I need, um, that there would be like a referral type of process. So I think it's just open communication and, and kind of identifying what kind of supports you're looking for and hopefully be able to kind of match up what makes most sense.
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I could imagine there's like a personal element to it too, right? In terms of finding, you know, like I know in terms of even accessing like a psychologist, you know, it's, it's sort of the same idea, you know, like you feel you maybe mesh more with one person versus another. So um, it might be something to consider as well. I know I've even just kind of going back to occupational therapy, I know myself I've accessed some supports there I feel very lucky in the province of Ontario we can get OTs or occupational therapists paid for free of charge through like a program through the Arthritis Society Canada um, but I think we're one of the few provinces and, and it usually doesn't involve a significant weight it's some special funding I think that they've been offered through the uh, Ontario Ministry of Health. <laughs> so uh, anyways, but I think for those of you in Ontario is often a resource I suggest people go to because you don't have to pay out of pocket and they're very familiar with arthritis and related issues and, you know, are sort of more specially trained in that. So uh, anyways, I thought I'd put that little plug in there <laughs> and uh, I really appreciate <laughs> you both. Uh, you know, I think it really shows just the variety of supports out there that people can access, that parenting is something that people can and should do if that's something they want to do. And uh, it's just a matter of finding the right tools and, and supports and services out there to enable you to do it to the best that you can. So it is possible. I have a 17-year-old and an 11-year-old, so I've managed, uh, despite being diagnosed, uh, you know, at, at quite a young age, right? I was 14 years old. So I just hopefully we'll leave that um, on a uh, final note of, of possibility and, and, and hope for people considering that, um, you know, potentially in their future. So thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you so much, Catherine. Um, I think Preet just put an evaluation form, which I'll share <laughs> afterwards. Um, you know, with those who've registered, even if they wish to kind of take a look at the recordings and and uh, they are most welcome to sort of evaluate as well. Um, and before I do finally you know, sign off, maybe we'll just launch that final poll um, and uh, see, yeah, Anna, if I can get you to launch that final poll, then we can see how people have done uh, before and after. And hopefully we've provided a few more parenting strategies um, to, um, you know, move uh, move ahead and, and consider that as, as you contemplate life as a parent while living with arthritis. So I do see a lot of people moved up to intermediate. So this is good to hear. They're feeling more confident in terms of the possibilities here. So I mean, just doing a, a sort of rough assessment. So I'm, I'm really glad to hear this. And uh, it'll be uploaded to our YouTube channels in the coming uh, month or so, so that if there's something that you want to go back and refer to, you can do so on your own time and at your own pace. So again, thank you so much and have a good rest of your day. Uh, and happy early Father's Day for for for, for those with uh, who, who identify as fathers in our audience. Thanks so much.